Hello and welcome to The Advocates on PLUS TV Africa, your Sunday reminder that important conversations are among the necessary tools for a senior society. I will be talking about how unemployment contributes to the underdevelopment. Matthew Sizi Bosime will be talking on decolonizing education in Africa. Elijah Felix will be talking about 2023 elections in view, lessons from the United Kingdom. Sami Sage Hassan will be talking about stories as vehicles for education and social development. Today, expect interesting conversations that will help create a better society. We'll be right back after the break. Welcome back. How underemployment contributes to underdevelopment? Most people complain they cannot get jobs they want. Many people complain about the lack of jobs. But research and data suggests that the real problem is not that those jobs do not exist. The real problem, most times, is that there is a lack of adequate skills, experience, aptitude, and the faculty to deliver on the job. Unemployment rate in Nigeria in 2022 is at 33%. Let that sink in. A third of our labor force in Nigeria do not have a decent means of sustenance. Or if you want that in actual numbers, about 23 million people are not in gainful employment. Let's not even delve into, delve into what it does to the crime rates, what it does to the general sense of well-being, or what it does to our happiness index as a people. Now, let's talk underemployment. First, a brief dichotomy into both concepts. There's a difference between being unemployed and underemployed. To be unemployed means you don't have a job, while to be underemployed means you have a job, but the job you have is inadequate. You know those colleagues of yours that feel that you know, the job they have is beneath them, or the ones that are actually constantly you're asking for loans by the middle of the month. The country's underemployment rate, that's Nigeria, that's people who work less than 24 hours, 20 hours a week, is also high at 22.8%. If you add all the numbers together, almost half of our labor force are either unemployed or underemployed. What does this portend for Nigeria and Nigerians? On the economic side alone, unemployment increases poverty and disease in the country. It also reduces the national output of goods and services. It increases rural urban migration. It increases debt rates, leads to wastage of resources, and then promotes social unrest. What should we actually do about unemployment or unemployment in Nigeria? An ad academic journal called the, Conver the Conversation advocates some effective ideas. Now, they feel we need to address the causative factors. Starting with the policy framework, it has to be more stable. The government must address insecurity so people can go about their normal business. The government will also manage the exchange rate so that imported imputes are cheaper. That will also expand production. It will also create jobs. Nigeria must also encourage investment. There's a very low level of deposit rates and it's unattractive to invest in treasury bills or even other securities. The rates are low and the inflation rate is much higher. So every day, your money actually loses value. The infrastructure for small-scale production, including electricity supply, is poor, and people have to now provide their own. If the government does not tackle unemployment or unemployment seriously, the situation will in turn affect development. It's a slippery slope, and it must be dealt with very fast. This is an economic index. I think that's what we're talking about. Uh, this, I think, uh issue of underemployment and unemployment starts from education. What I knew while I was in university, I knew why, um, some lecturers that taught some certain professional courses in courts that do not have the capacity to even practice this course. So just imagine what kind of skills they will impute right. or, or the students will acquire from yeah. such kind of lecturers. Yeah. You are studying engineering in the university, and you, uh, let's, let me give an example. You're studying electrical electronics engineering, for, for instance. You don't know how to um, uh, program single ele electronics to solve certain problem. Well, it's okay. Some people can read engineering and come out and not practice engineering. Mm -hmm. It's possible. But um, I, mean, I mean in the larger scale, you are studying engineering, you are studying computer science, you are studying maybe some other courses, and you don't even understand the, the uh, professional mm -hmm. process. Yeah of those courses, even the lecturer that's, that lectures you don't even, it's not practicing it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's no much skill when you go out, you now see there's a huge gap between the university and the realities in the society. So, so in response to um, the education thing you were saying, um, 
This is what I noticed. It's, it's actually it's systemic. It's really, it's the problem is not just, it didn't start with education. It's systemic. And then it rallies right round back to unemployment and underemployment. Because I remember back in the day in the North, when um, people weren't trained, and then you needed to just have your people in positions. So getting a job was an act of legislation to, 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 to a point. Mm -hmm. it, wasn't some, it wasn't based on merit or qualification. It was like, you should be next. So quite a number of people got jobs as lecturers or whatever it is they got job as because they needed a job. Especially catchment area. Ex and they, exactly, <laughs> and they, they just need, and they, they, people needed to have someone there, and they seem to have a little understanding or little knowledge in that field. They're not really maybe properly qualified engineers or even lecturers, but that's just the only opening there is. So, okay, you know what? So you say you, have, you worked in the bridge before. When they were building that bridge, you were there, <laughs> and you went <laughs> to primary school and secondary school. Do you know anything about Oh, yes, I walked in the bridge. Oh, yeah, Come there's on, one lecture. Like <laughs> <laughs> take it. Anyway, I, I, I think there should be also a so shame. So let's quickly okay. take um, Mr. Yeah. Botsime. Sisi Botsime, uh, I know you, you're, you're passionate about education. So what, what's your opinion on this, uh, on this topic? The whole thing of unemployment and unemployment, uh, it actually goes down to what I'm advocating for when I say that there's a dire need for a revolution because I feel that uh, we are not preparing uh, our students, we're not preparing our learners, you know, for, 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 for the real life, you know, post-school. So uh, one of the things that I, I, I say that, uh, you know, as early as uh, junior high school uh, or actually primary school, we need to uh, uh, teach our children to become entrepreneurs, you know, instead of them, you know, going to school so that they can get employment, we need to um, equip them with skills so that they can become, you know, uh, job creators, you know, so, um, and, and I think like, like you said, yeah, our, schooling, uh, our schooling system is a bit of a problem because now, you know, um, in, in our schools, uh, our children are taught to, to compete instead of collaborating. So now when they finish school, you know, we have people from different fields with different skills. It's really difficult for them to come together and create something because they come from a background whereby they have to compete. I have to be first. I, you know, I'm the one, I'm the smartest one. Absolutely. Absolutely. I agree with you. Fantastic. And you know, you wrote a, a, a topic or concept that I'm actually very interested in. The fact that we're not teaching children to produce, we're teaching them to consume. Yes. It's the problem yes. with Africa, sure. generally. So instead yes. of teaching children yes. to, or students to go out and actually you know, create jobs, we train them to go out and look for jobs. So there's, we need to sort of reverse engineer that concept, the concept of education in itself. So people start thinking like producers versus consumers. Well, I, I, I think yeah. they should. I mean, OK. You, Please uh, go on. CZ, you want to say something? Yeah. Please go on, CZ. No, no, no. Yeah, let, let him go. Okay, thank you. Okay. So I, I was going to say that there should be a handshake between the town and the gown, the academic community and the society, so that there will be like a real life application process and appreciation of, irrespective of the course you are studying in the university. Mm -hmm. Now, let me give you an example. It's true that we should learn to be produce production minded and not more of production minded and less of consumption. Well, I think we should be a balance of boots. Anybody, it's not wrong if you graduate from the university and your sole purpose is to work in a corporate firm or in the um, whatever sector, private sector, you want to work as an employed person, it's not wrong. Everybody cannot produce or be an entrepreneur. In fact, they don't even understand the concept of it. Yeah. You claim to be an entrepreneur, no, 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 the difference is, no, no, no. The, the, the idea the of production, and sorry, the idea of production and consumption is not being an employer or an employee. Is the mindset even today? Companies are recruiting more entrepreneurs. They want people that think like owners. Entrepreneurs. Do you know what I'm right. So you're thinking like an owner. You're thinking like a producer, even as a staff or an employee of a business. You're not thinking, let me just come here and do my bit. You're thinking, how do I move this business forward? So it's your thinking. It's not really right. Do you understand? That's great. Okay. Yeah, I, was, I was going to add something about um, production and consumption. You know, and I was going to just pick up maybe the American model which is a bit different from the Chinese model. You know, um, the, I think what they do over there, for instance, is there's a crop of people who are, um, who are trained or identified and supported to produce. Because we all want to be producers. Yeah. 
what is important is society is producing enough for itself or and enough to actually to export or give out you know so i think that's what's what's important we all will not be producers we all will be consumers mm, but the but key is some of us yeah. should be able to produce enough for all of us all but of then us. i think i still prefer the chinese model the american model works has worked really fantastically to a point but i prefer the chinese model where everybody produces something no matter how little so we can all still put our hand we can I, I, for me it's best if we have both both uh, both systems a crop of super producers while everybody chips in something Ah, that's, that's perfect. So that we also have more than enough to also export. More than you know, because you yes. can't consume everything anyway. Yes, we can, so. that, and that's what that's what that's how the, a nation becomes wealthy. Fantastic! Thanks, thanks everyone for uh, excellent you know insights and analysis all round. All right, Sisi Bosima is next after the break. <laughs>